What up? And welcome to another episode of From the Script to the Screen. The Jujutsu Kaisen Edition, episode 11 of season 2 is out now, covering chapters 94 to 97, finishing off volume 11. We'll be jumping into volume 12 next week. Looking forward to that. And with that being said, as always, first and foremost, got a shout out the creator, Gigi Akutami. Excuse me if I'm butchering the pronunciation. And got a shout out to Studio Mappa. The animators for giving us this great piece of work. And I gotta say, I love this episode, man. Thought they did a great job of adapting these pages. There was a couple curse techniques and interesting powers that came about this week. So it was cool to see how they showed it. Like I always say, the manga and the anime come together to fully flesh out the story. So I appreciate it. This week's episode starts off with the young homies, like we saw from last week, trying to break this barrier so that they'd be able to go and let the rest of the jujitsu sorcerers know what's going on and that way they will try to come up with a plan and try to help gojo escape from the prison room at this point and so with them trying to do that again we know that these barriers that are at shibuya station are very intricate and a big part of this whole operation i guess you could say and so just an interesting conversation between the three students because to them, usual barrier techniques, somebody makes a barrier. The person that casts a barrier is supposed to be inside because you would assume that they're trying to avoid danger and protect themselves. But these guys are casting barriers from the outside. Like we saw when Yuji fought the grasshopper, being outside the barrier lets you it's supposed to make it stronger, but you're also supposed to be more accessible to being discovered. So that's supposed to be the trade-off of making this barrier stronger, which is why Yuji's not able to break it after multiple events of trying. They figure out that the person, the person casting this barrier might be at an obvious position, and that's where the battle starts. And so we see that the kids decide to split up the trio and try to take them down easier that way. Hino ends up fighting this duo, grandmother and grandson, supposedly. And we see him use more of his curse technique, something I enjoy seeing. And his curse technique is pretty cool. He basically is able to invoke different mythical beasts or taken from what I was able to find was old Japanese and Chinese mythology, but it's different beasts that are, of course, have different controls over different elements. The horn was supposed to be part of this lion creature that eliminates wrongdoers called Kaichi. We see him use Reike, which is supposed to have control over like energy or water. You see him move more fluid and things like that when he was under that invocation. So it was pretty cool. And ironically, which is why the name of the episode was Seance, is because the old lady ends up having the same curse technique that he does. And in a crazy turn of events, ironically, to bring things full circle, we see that she ends up invoking Megumi's father, which is crazy because it's the same episode where, in my opinion, Megumi really shines. We see just how versatile his curse technique is and how proficient he is at it. The fact that he's able to use different Shikigamis through shadows, I think it's pretty cool. Definitely my favorite curse technique of the show so far. And like I said online, you see just how smart he is in battle, adapted in real time, was able to figure out the old man's curse technique. So it's crazy to see that his father, who we learned about in the beginning of the season, 
is on the battlefield now. And unfortunately for Eno, we saw just how much of a monster he is. So it's not good circumstances for him. He was beating up pretty bad, but hopefully that's all it was. We'll have to find out next week with that too. But like I've been telling you guys, in this season, we're gonna see a bunch of different techniques and sorcerers. So it was cool to see some different stuff this week. And ending the episode, shout out to Yuji and Megumi, who I feel use great teamwork this week. Like I said, up against an old man, who of course you guys gotta understand, the more you know about sorcery, the more it'll help you out in battle. So that's the little bit of advantage that this gentleman has against these guys. And we also know that half the battle is just trying to figure out what the other person's technique is. It could be a great handicap towards you. We know that it could be a great handicap for you or against you, unless you're an anomaly like Gojo, who we all know. We do see a little bit of the dark side of the jujitsu world being introduced to the old lady and the old man. You see that during their time, jujitsu sorcerers were more free and able to do what they want. And if you think about it, it's understandable because these people that were able to handle evil spirits or curses, I'm pretty sure were held in higher regard. So it can understand why they had some leeway. And unfortunately, we just see that according to some people's techniques and just upbringing, even like we saw with Ghetto earlier this season, anything could trigger somebody, anything could make them flip. And so some people use their curse techniques against humans and that's how it is. Not everyone is all for the people like we've been seeing in Jujutsu Jitsuvai, you know? But like I said, Getting into the battle, the old man's curse technique was inverse, which is why the youngsters were having a trouble with him at first. And in the manga, they had a little visual that helped it out a little bit. I brought the whiteboard out. This is curse techniques explained in 30 seconds or less, hopefully. The old man's curse technique is inverse. So just like the visual shows, if the attack is very strong, it's very weak against him. But like Magumi said, if he was fighting somebody with a more complicated technique or an anomaly like Gojo, like I said earlier, he'd be having a harder time. So Magumi figures out after a couple things that happened in the battle, his curse technique is inverse, but that there must be a certain limit to it, being that the unexpected hit with the back of the blade was able to hit him, something he wasn't expecting to be hard. And the rabbit brushing his shoulder, something he wasn't expecting to be a hard hit, equated to him not having damage nullification because nothing would have hit him. And so you see Magumi uses his frogs, like you see there in the Funko Pop, to land a decent hit. They hit him with a couple blows, couple combos, kick his ass. And when the old man tries his best to try to kick it into second gear, another favorite panel of mine. With perfect timing, like we saw in season one, we know that Yuji's curse technique has a somewhat delay to it. And that ends up being the perfect opportunity for this here. Yuji stops his blow right before. And since the old man is expecting some type of finishing attack, he tries to brace for it, is not expecting it, and then ends up getting hit with Yuji's delayed technique. Ding, ding, ding. The young homies win. Great episode this week. Love the music. The soundtrack did a great job of making it suspenseful, but also giving you hope at the same time. The fight choreography was great this week. Voice acting was great. Shout out to all parties involved. And let me know what you guys think will happen next week. Be jumping into volume 12. And we out. Peace.